So in this third video we're going to finish off our leg subassembly. All I've done since the end of the last video is to create another three joints, revolute joints between the remaining linkages and the leg body. So that's all ready to go now, those linkages are behaving exactly the way they should do. What I now need to do is create a block in between these two faces uh, in order to house the servo motors that would be needed to drive the hexapod if we're going on to make a fully functioning hexapod. We're not going to get to that level in this project but we do need that servo block to be put in there to also create the connection point back to the core module that we created in the earlier videos. So I need to create a new component so just the way that we've done in all of the other uh, videos previously and I'm going to call that the servo block and what I need to do is sketch on a plane that's actually halfway between these two faces and that plane currently doesn't exist so if you're looking for a sketch plane that maybe isn't the origin plane or it isn't a face of a body that currently exists and you need to construct that plane then the way you do that is under the construct menu there's a number of different ways that you can actually create um, construction planes you can also create axes and you can create points from this menu but the one that we're looking for here is we're looking for this one called midplane. Midplane will allow me to select the inside face of that particular linkage and the corresponding inside face of the opposite linkage and now it's put in a construction plane that's exactly between those two faces. So you can see that there. So that's now given me what I need to actually start my sketch. So I can now select that uh, plane as my sketching plane and I'm going to start off with a two point rectangle and one that is 60 millimeters deep and 80 millimeters wide. I'm just going to drag that across into position so I want it to be about halfway down the linkage as you can see there so that's fine and what I want to do now is create some connection holes for these linkages. Now the first one needs to be in line with this bottom linkage and the way of doing that is to go to the sketch menu and down towards the bottom there is an option called project and if I zoom in what project allows you to do is select the edge of that hole and it will actually put that in as a projected sketch entity on the sketch plane. Now you can see it's in purple and if you see purple on sketches at any time that means that's projected geometry so it's not geometry that you have sketched it's geometry that's been projected in from um, another object or another sketch. So that's okay, so that's generated the circle that I need to create the hole for that. So you can see that there. What I now need to do is add in a construction point for the center of a second hole. So I'm going to do that the same way as I did before. I'm going to pick the point tool, drop a point in on the sketch, and then go down to the sketch dimension option and click on that point and that point for that projected and make that a 30 millimeter vertical dimension and then go back and do the same for the horizontal so click on that point and then drag down and that needs to be 20 millimeters so that's given me a construction point now for my second circle which I'm going to use uh, that point for and drag out and create a 5 millimeter diameter circle for that I can now stop sketch and now I can use that sketch so I'm going to go create extrude pick on that profile not pick the circles because I want those to remain as holes and I'm going to start extruding now at the minute it's only extruding in one direction which is what we've done for most of the things that we've created but if I go f into the direction option and choose symmetric it's now going to symmetrically extrude that so the way that I push the arrow it's now extruding it in the opposite direction by the same amount as well if I now click on that face of that linkage it actually snaps that extrusion to that face so when I now click OK I've now got a servo block that's sitting perfectly inside those two linkages so to finish off this servo block I now need to sketch on this top face and I'm going to create a circle again you'll see that snapping to the midpoint which is great because I want to make that 25 millimeters and then put a second circle within it that's five millimeters which is going to be our pivot hole so I can now stop sketch and do a 
create extrude on that so pick that profile and start to drag that down and then tell it to extrude to that face but I've only got half a hole there so I just need to open up the sketches menu under my servo block and then go create extrude and pick on that particular uh, profile there and again I can drive that down through into the block you see it's red again because it's cutting and that's created the hole for my pivot what I would do now is probably add some fillets on there in, into all of those sharp corners to make that look a lot better I'm not going to do that in this video you, you, I think you know how to do that now from the earlier videos but what I'm going to do now is create the other joints and the first thing I can do is create a joint between this part and the servo block much more easily than I did before now the reason for that is because these two are already in the right relationship to each other so I created a hole that was a projection from this so these are already in the correct alignment so instead of moving this into position I can now go to the assemble menu and choose something called as built joint and an as built joint means that I just need to tell the software this time that I want to connect this part to this part and then tell it the relationship that I want which is a revolute joint around that axis and as soon as I do that it's created that joint so it's not had to do any movement this time it's just asking me what relationship I want between those two parts so I'm going to do that again another as built joint uh, again between that linkage and that servo block and centered around that shaft so that's given me the second joint that I need so the difference between an as built joint and a joint is where in this case I need to move that into alignment with this hole in this case that alignment already existed so I need to go back and create the final joints now between uh, these parts so I want to create a joint between a face on the inside of this uh, linkage now it's difficult to actually pick this because as soon as I try and come off that hole it makes it very difficult to try and pick down at the center of that opposite face once I can see the options I've got available there if I hold down control or I think command on a Mac then you should be able to lock onto that view and then select that particular feature there so that's now got that feature at the bottom of that hole so I can now pick on for the second part of the joint the corresponding feature on the servo block again that's a revolute joint so that's good so that's that joint made and I can now go around and do that again on this side now I'm just going to move that out the way just so I can see a little better because it was obscuring the hole and I'm going to go to the joint menu again capture position again just rotate around um, pick up on the fact that I want that feature hit control or command and then pick the, the actual um, corresponding part I think that just picked the wrong part there so so that's now picked the correct uh, mating feature click on that one again that moves into position and rotates around so that's good we've now got all of our joints we've now got eight joints set up between this so if I now go back to my uh, top level component you'll see now that the servo is moving and the leg block is static and that's not really what we want we did that just earlier so you could see the revolute joint we need to take that grounding off that leg and that's just the opposite to what we did before if we go to the uh, leg uh, option in the menu and then do unground that's taking that pin out of it so now that's able to move and we now want to apply that uh, grounding to the servo block so when we do that we just go pick on ground click on capture position that's now grounded and now what you should see is the block is now fixed and the leg can now move now what you'll notice is when you move this you'll see that it actually passes through the servo block so that's not really very um, representative of real life that wouldn't happen in real life but again we can deal that with that really quickly in, uh, in Fusion under the assemble menu there's an option called enable contact sets and enable contact sets allows you to set rules that says when parts come into contact with each other they have to stop so once you've got the contact sets in the browser you can 
in this case go to all bodies contact and once you've done that it's now set up a set of relationships which means that when I push that down there when that red block hits the servo block it actually has to stop and the same when it goes that way so now there's there's a proper physical relationship between these two parts and they can no longer pass through each other so the final thing I want to do now is add the um, final part of the leg to to this block here and I need to activate that leg assembly again so go to the leg so I'm now just um, creating uh, something on around this leg and what I want to do is use that construction that mid plane again that I created before so I'm going to create a sketch on that plane so just capture position and I'm going to very quickly um, put in a piece of geometry and you can spend maybe a little longer on this uh, getting exactly the shape that you want so I've closed that sketch you can see now it's gone beige uh, I can now hit stop sketch you can see I've got that sat in the center of that that particular leg and now I can do create extrude and click on that profile and I'm going to do a symmetric extrusion again just as I did earlier so I'm now going to pull that in this direction and five maybe six millimeters might be uh, appropriate so overall that will be 12 millimeters wide so I now click on OK so I've now got that leg produced there and probably what I want to do now is fill it and just pick on some of these edges to add fillets into uh, or you can do fillet or you can do rule fillet because what you want to do is create a uh, kind of rounded bottom for this so that it sits nicely on the on the floor and then maybe what you want to do is a rule fillet perhaps on some of these faces so if you put a rule fillet on that that face for instance that's probably gone a little too far you can see that's added in that fillet so you can now carry on and, and do that and tidy that uh, that leg up uh, to finish it off but basically what we've now got is the final part of our sub assembly so you can now see we've got this servo block we've got four linkages and we've got this leg which if I actually operate it moves the way it would do in real life one last thing uh, we're going to bring this into the core assembly and we don't need any of these parts grounded to that so I'm just going to go back to the servo block and unground that part and that's now ready for us to bring in to our final assembly so that's completed the design and connection of joints for our leg that we're going to bring into the core assembly repeat that six times to create our hexapod